Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be making a really cute griffin piece. I've been wanting to do another griffin for a while, but I wanted to do it based off of a kind of tiny bird that you don't normally see griffins based off of. So we're going to be making a cardinal griffin. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so for our little cardinal griffin, I'm going to start on the clay pieces. For the clay pieces, we need to make the face and then we're going to be making the back feet. So for the face, I'm starting out with a lump of tin foil that's more pointed, that way it will take the shape of the pointed beak of the cardinal. So I've got that and I'm going to cover this in clay, I'm going to clean everything up, and then I'm going to start building up the clay to shape the face. For the eyes, I'm going to be using these color changing glass pieces. These are basically treated with um, paint that is heat sensitive on the back and if you touch it, the heat from your hand basically will change the color of it. It's pretty much what mood rings are made out of. Now because we are going to be baking this, the heat from the oven will kind of affect the color changingness of the eyes. Basically, it's going to take a, it takes a couple days for it to go back to normal, I think. Um, I've done this before, and at first I thought I ruined them, but they did eventually go back to where they worked again. So I'm not going to guarantee that the eyes are color changing, but um, they'll still look really cool. Anyways, once I have the glass eyes in place, I'm going to start building up the big chubby cheeks that I want on the face. I really want to just make this a little cartoony and really cute. So I'm going to add a decent amount of clay for the cheeks. I'm going to frame the eyes and make the eyelids a little bit and just kind of keep building up the rest of the face around the eyes and eventually we'll get to where we add the clay nose and start adding the nostrils and stuff and just all the extra features. Now we are going to be furring the face so that it'll be all like fluffy and feathery. So I'm not going to add a ton of detail anywhere else other than around the main features of the face. So I'm going to get this all baked. I'm going to put it in the oven for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And while that is baking, we can start working on our clay feet for the back legs. So for our clay feet, we're going to be building these up on a wire frame. So I have a pretty simple wire frame. The main thing about it is the very end is looped and that's where we're going to have the foot and it'll keep it from twisting on the wire while we're building it. So that's the main reason I have that. Anyways, I'm going to get this completely covered in clay and start building up the toes using balls of clay. So I'm going to blend everything together and just kind of clean it up a little bit, mainly around where the toes meet. I want to make those lines a little smoother and of course I want to make sure that it looks like one solid piece. Lastly, I want to add some claws, but I don't want to add like really sharp, uh, dangerous looking claws. I want something just kind of cute and petite. So I'm going to take some really tiny clay balls and I'm going to put them at the tips of each toe and then I'm just going to use my tool to clean up the edges and make sure that it's nice and solid. I'm going to also pinch them a little bit to give them a tiny bit of a point but nothing major. After that I'm going to bake these as well so I'm going to put them in the oven for pretty much the same time and temp about 45 to 55 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Once we're done with that and they're all cooled from baking, we can start painting them. So with our cardinal griffin, I'm going to go with the classic cardinal red color. So I'm going to get all my clay pieces primered with red and then we can start adding our details. Mm -hmm. 
for the face, I'm going to start with adding some shadows around the eyes and just kind of defining the shape of the eyes. For this, I'm just going to darken up the red that I'm using by mixing it with a little bit of black and just kind of go over it and frame them a bit. And then for the beak, I'm going to take an orange and I'm going to go over it. Now, orange is one of those more translucent paints, so it's going to take a few coatings before it doesn't show the red underneath. So I'm going to get that done and then we can start working on more features like the nose and just kind of cleaning everything up. Lastly, once everything is dried, I'm going to use a tool and scratch away any excess paint that got on our glass eyes. So I'm just going to clean those up real quick. And then for painting the feet, I'm going to water down some black paint and I'm going to start adding some shadows in between the toes and stuff. So I'm just going to mess around with that and try and like darken it up. I don't want to really darken up any other spots, I just want to define the shape of the toes by adding shadows. Other than that, I'm just going to take some unwatered down black paint and I'm going to go over our claws. So I'm just going to go over those real quick and then we can let everything dry. I'll of course resin everything to also protect it. Now that's going to take a little bit of time to finish curing, so it gives us plenty of time to work on sewing everything and getting ready to put the piece together. So here is our pattern. I've got the main body, some feathers for the wings and the tail, and then of course we have the front legs and the front feet, and then the back legs, which we don't have back feet for those because they are clay. I'm going to start on the feathers for the wings and tail, mainly because the glue that I'm using kind of takes a while to dry, and I need them ready for when we put the doll together. So the feathers are going to be made out of a fake leather, and the backing is kind of ugly, so basically I made a piece for each side, and I'm going to sandwich them together. So I'm going to glue those real quick, and then I have some fur fabric cut out to go around the bases of the tail and the wings. So I'm going to glue those in place, and we're going to set those all aside to dry while we work on the rest of the sewing. So for the body, I have a left and right fabric piece, and basically we're going to sandwich these together with the fur on the inside, and we're going to sew down the belly first. And then for the fabric for the legs, both the front and back legs each have an inside piece and an outside piece. We're going to sandwich these together and sew down just the fronts. We're going to leave the backs open just like the body to uh, basically make it where we can stuff and close these up. And then for sewing the front legs, I have everything drawn out on my fabric, and I don't have it cut out yet because it's just going to be easier to do the sewing first and then cut everything out. So I'm going to use my sewing machine for this, I'm going to sew everything, cut it out. I'm going to take the main foot portion and I'm going to flip it right side out and stuff it. You'll notice that I have a tiny hole on one side and that's where the other piece is going to go, that's the back toe. So we're also going to flip the toe right side out and we're going to stuff and sew that in place on the foot.
Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to make a simple little wire frame for this. So you're going to need the fabric pieces and the clay head to kind of measure everything. For the head, I usually leave an extra three inches to wrap up. Um, that way we have a clump of wire to go inside of the head and connect it to the wire frame. So I'm going to measure the length of the body plus three inches, and then I'm going to do the same thing to the legs. I'm going to plus three inches for each end and the front and back legs are actually connected. So I'm going to get those wires cut and then we're going to shape them and then we're going to wrap them together. And then once we have our wireframe put together, we can start putting the doll together on the wireframe. So I'm going to take the fabric for the body and I'm going to figure out where the wires go. I'm going to cut some holes for them to run through the body and I'm going to slide the fabric over the wireframe. Then I'm going to take our clay head and I'm going to glue it to the end of the wire where the neck would be. We can then take the fabric and glue it around the base of the head. Then I'm going to cut and glue into place a strip of fabric for the back of our griffin. After that's in place, I'm going to give it a little bit of time to dry and then we can start stuffing and closing up our griffin. So I'm going to sew down about two inches until I get to where I think the wings should be connected. And then I'm going to start sewing those in place while I'm stuffing and closing up the body. When I get to the end, I'm also going to be sewing the tail in place. So I'm going to get that in place as well. Now before we add the legs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hair trimmer and I'm going to trim up the sides of the body. Just kind of shorten everything. It'll make adding the legs a lot easier. Plus we just don't need this much fur. He's really fluffy. And then once I have all that extra fluff out of the way, I'm going to start sewing the back legs in place. So I'm going to take the fabric for that. And basically the inside portion is going to go under that wire for the leg and the rest is going to go over, kind of wrapping it up to where the wire will be inside of the leg. I'm then going to take our back clay feet and we're going to start adding those to the wire frame. So I'm going to take a thinner gauge wire and I'm going to wrap the wire sticking out of the back of our clay legs to the wire frame. So I'm going to get those all wrapped together and then I'm going to take the fabric for the legs and glue it around the bases of our clay feet. Once that's dried, we can then start stuffing and closing up both of the legs. I'm also going to trim up the fur on the back of the legs as well, mainly the front of them and then just kind of shape it into the rest of the fur. And then for the front feet, what I'm going to do is pretty much the same except for a few changes. I'm going to add the fabric to the body first for the legs, and then for the fabric feet, I'm going to add a small bit of wire to them for the outer toes, and then run the rest of the fabric foot over the wire that we have on the body. So I'm not going to connect any wires like we did with the clay pieces. I can then sew both of the fabrics for the legs together, and then we can stuff and close up the backs of these legs as well. I'm going to trim up that extra bit of fur that we just added and then I'm also going to go over the rest of the body just a little bit more to make sure that I'm happy with how the fur looks. So the body of our griffin is all put together but we do need to finish up the face. So I'm going to add a little bit of felt to the top of the head to kind of create the crest of our cardinal and I'm just going to layer these in between the bits of fur that's already there. So I'm just going to glue those in place and then once I get to the face I'm going to cut some fur pieces to fit over his cheeks and then I'm going to use some fur trimmings to kind of clean up the edges and cover the rest of the face.
guys, and here is our tiny little griffin. He's so cute. I love his chippy cheeks. But yeah, he's kind of on the smaller side. I've been wanting to try and make a few small pieces for the shop, and I figured that would be a nice change of pace because I've been making some really big pieces lately. But yeah, he will be on my website, so if you're interested in buying him, check the links down below for that. And then while you're down there, there's a bunch of other links to a bunch of different art supplies that I like to use to make my art dolls. So if you're curious on what I use, or you want to try and make your own art doll but you don't know what to use, you can check those links out. Now if you do buy anything through them, it does help support the channel. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!